My name is Robert Lures, and I came to Fort Hays State in 1968. Uh, I, I was a new doctor from the PhD, not a real doctor, from Stanford. My wife was, as they used to say, with child. And we came here so that I could teach history and figure out what teaching was all about. Our plan was to stay here about two or three years, and somehow we just stayed here. I've been here more than 50 years now. I was brought here not to talk about myself, but the Madrigal Dinner, which was part of the Fort Hayes tradition for about 48 years, if I remember correctly. A Madrigal is a Renaissance song that is sung by a group without instruments backing them up. The dinner part is, I think, self-explanatory. It's basically dinner theater, normally put on in universities or churches or whatever at Christmas time. And it involves sometimes a story, but lots of eating, lots of drinking, and lots of music, and hopefully some merriment. <laughs> it was uh, created by uh, Don Stout and uh, John Thorns, both of whom did graduate work at Indiana, as I understand it, where there was a tradition of madrigal dinners, and they, they brought the tradition here. And then as they retired at the end of the 1980s, uh, others took it over. Steve Wood, who is director of the Memorial Union, wanted to keep this going. And he was kind enough to come to, to me and to others to keep the process underway. Uh, among the, the members of the committee were Rager Moore, who did the music. Uh, Martha Holmes was in charge of art and decor. Always some representative from the food services. And eventually, a, as we developed, Renda Mater, who is uh, director of the Hayes Arts Council. She was trained as an actress, and she also had contacts to get extra money to put into the operation. And we kept it going. When we took over, as part of the committee, the Madrigal Dinner operations, Chris and I did uh, Lord and Lady again. We did it five times, five years, if you can imagine that in the end. The Lord, Lord and Lady of the Manor, they're the hosts. They welcome everybody. They keep things going and so on. And then after we did that for two more years, I wrote into the script, for that was my job, to be in charge of the script, I wrote into the script a new character, the Lord High Chamberlain, who was an MC, basically, and a troubleshooter. And then at the very end, when we were getting ready to retire, uh, we decided, why not write ourselves back in? And what better thing to do than the King and Queen of England? I did a kind of Henry VIII figure, and Chris, my wife, uh, insisted on being Henry VIII's last wife, the one that survived him. Does that tell you something about Chris? Uh, Catherine Parr, beautiful, beautiful uh, production, I thought. Now, the guests of honor, they, they were honored, probably because they gave money to the university or they were important. And they got to sit at the head table, everybody got to watch them eat, wonderful. And that was basically their role, to be there with their seal of approval, yes, we're part of this too. And uh, our, our response was, thank you and remember us as you're giving away money or honors or whatever down the road. And they, they were always pleasant people, usually two couples. Who else was involved in this? Mostly students, some faculty members playing instruments. Uh, trumpeters were all students, if you can believe that. The uh, servers uh, bringing you your feast, all students. It, it was a, a chance for the students to be involved, and all the singers were students. The music was what we focused on throughout this. Uh, two nights in the performances, Saturday night, always a sellout, Friday, pretty close to a sellout. Costs, all right, just happened to have a ticket here, no good anymore since there's no madrigal dinner. This is from 1995, and the price is $18. By the time the last Madrigal dinner was held, I believe the tickets were $30 plus, which is still a bargain. All the entertainment, all the food, it was wonderful. You might be asking yourself, what would go on if I had the privilege of attending the Madrigal dinner? Well, the first thing that would go on is I would be in costume. And so I am going to pause for just a moment, put on something a lot more uncomfortable, and be right back with you. Not too bad, is it? I actually wore this as Lord of the Manor. I could still wear it. Seems impossible. It's a miracle. Now, I am sometimes asked, since I am a historian by trade, how authentic was the Madrigal Dinner? Well, I preferred to think of it as a fantasy inspired by the Renaissance. I don't think modern people would care for Renaissance food. 
For example, uh, one delicious recipe that I ran into was cabbage soup, which was seasoned by honey and licorice. Sounds delicious. Uh, I did notice on some of the menus, they put in pumpkin soup, which is pretty good. Uh, I've actually tried it. And at a Renaissance dinner in England, no forks, everything is hands. And you ate off of, not plates, but pieces of bread, which became something you munched on afterwards because of, all the juices were soaked into it. So yeah, it's close enough to the Renaissance. All right, so what would go on at a Renaissance feast such as this one? At 6.30 precisely, trumpeters would come down the staircase and blow their horns. Before that, you were having, I brought a copy of the menu here from one of the dinners. Oh, this is when Chris and I did King and Queen of England. Very nice. Before the trumpeters would come down, you would be having some wassail or wassail. You pronounce it the way you want. Beforehand, this is at the foot of the main staircase in the Union. Now, what is wassail? Basically, it's apple juice that's been juiced up with some rum or, or some, some brandy or something like that. This being Forte's state, we did not use the rum and brandy. Anyway, at 6.30 precisely, the trumpeters come down and announce the Lord and Lady are going to descend the staircase, or they're announcing me as the Lord High Chamberlain coming down the staircase to announce the Lord and Lady, the way it would have been at a real manner. And after some chit-chat with my wife, the lady, I would propose a toast. May I have the goblet, please? Thank you. So I would give a toast, and if I recall properly, here's how it begins. I won't give you the whole thing. Wassail, ye lords and ladies. Wassail, ye faithful retainers. Welcome to the manor. This is the time for mirth and merrymaking and for remembering the birth of the Christ child who brought happiness into the world, etc. The singers have meanwhile come down the staircase after me. They have sung a wassailing song. There's some more chit chat. I introduce the honored guests and we go all upstairs and hide in the director's office of the union. Now the servers at the tables come down and they announce the table you're to sit at. Each table has a suitably English name, Edinburgh Castle, Sussex Place, no such manners. And you would go in and be seated inside. Finally, when everyone's inside, there would be a procession of the servants carrying replicas of the food that is to be eaten tonight, including a paper mache boar's head. No, you don't get to eat a boar's head, but you do get roast beef. Close enough, close enough. And the Yule log is lit. It's in the middle of the floor there. And we all sit down. Already on the table are fruits and nuts and such. This is your salad. Now let me be sure that I get this in correct order. Now comes the soup, which is brought to the table by waiters and waitresses and removed by the same. Now the boar's head that I made reference to. Always a big ceremony with that. It's brought forward and it is knighted. Yes. I, Knight the sirloin. Yeah, and that, that's the typical humor of the time. I know, but it's 100, 500 years ago. After that would be the peacock is brought in. Fake. Well, it's a stuffed peacock. I can't say it's fake. A former peacock, that's called. That heralds the coming in of the chicken or turkey uh, uh, dinner, part of the dinner. And finally, there is the dessert. After the dessert, there would be a concert, usually about 20 minutes long, from the singers. And then the Lord says his goodbyes, including a, a passage from Shakespeare, very Renaissance fellow. I learned early on from observation that the passage for Shakespeare I'd better read because I can't memorize this. I learned this from attending one of the dinners where the Lord embarrassing embarrassingly enough, a member of the theater department forgot the speech and had to improvise. I don't know if anybody noticed, but I did. And then we process out. You've had uh, usually about three hours of entertainment, food, and so on. Outside, there'd be a reception line, the Lord, the lady, the honored guests, 
and people congratulating us on giving them such a fine feast. And it was a fine feast. The Madrigal Dinner was a showcase for the musicians and especially the singers. It was the opening phase of the Christmas season, which I now believe begins, what, in August? But in those days, we, we waited till December to actually get Christmas going. And it was a gift from the university to the community. We stopped having the Madrigal Dinners in 2012. I'm hoping it will be revived. Why not? The word Renaissance means revival. Revival.